Well, good morning. How's everybody? You good today? I'm glad you're here this morning. So the first thing we want to do is we want to do our Bible confession. So if you have your Bible with you, your smartphone, whatever it is that you refer to the Word, if you don't bring your Bible, maybe you should bring your Bible. Um, it's good to f see it in the book somewhere. And then also your phone. I love uh, using my phone as, as my be able to get scripture also. But let's go ahead and hold up your Bible, your smartphone, and let's proclaim this together. This is my Bible. It is the Word of God. It is life to me. Today I receive the Word. I confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I am obedient. I will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, again, we're in a series called How Sweet the Sound, and today I am honored and blessed to be in the pulpit to bring to you what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. You know, old hymns are really so important. Uh, they're the, the foundation and the backbone of our Christian faith, and a lot of times hymns are the word of God, and you learn the word through the hymns. How many of you are, are you, you're, you know the hymns? You know some old hymns? And yeah, so, so who knows? Maybe we'll incorporate an old hymn now and then, even after we're done with this series. But today, what a friend we have in Jesus. Now, I do want to acknowledge that with the amount of people that are here today, I know that some of you are carrying uh, a burden, a trial, going through something. Maybe you got some bad news. Maybe you got a report from the doctor or a situation is happening. Or you know what? If it's not you, maybe it's somebody you know. Maybe it's a family member or a friend. There's a lot of stuff going on, and I want to acknowledge that. Maybe the person sitting next to you or two, two seats down or a couple seats behind you is going through something, and you don't know it because a lot of times we put on our Christian smile, smile on the outside, pain on the inside. So I'm asking... To be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you never know what somebody's going through. You never know uh, what a word of encouragement or a smile or, a, or, a, or just a, a word, a handshake, a hug could, could mean for somebody. Um, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sin and griefs to bear. And what a privilege to carry everything to the Lord in prayer. You know, that really comes from a scripture that says, Philippians 4, 6, that says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Don't worry about anything, but instead pray about everything. So that's got it covered. Anything, everything. Is there anything left out? No. So don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. My hope for you today is that you would develop a true and sincere love for the presence of God through prayer. Now, a lot of people are scared of prayer. A lot of prayer, a lot of people say, oh, I don't know if I can do that. Prayer is a duty. Prayer is a waste of time. So many people don't understand prayer. They shy away from prayer. But I'm telling you, there's a, there's, that's like a secret hidden gem in the, in the Christian world, if, if you could grasp how powerful prayer is. So, a lot of times people just back away from prayer or actually think there's misconceptions. Let me give you a couple of misconceptions. So if you're taking notes, and I hope you are, and I, if instead of just shoving it in the back of your Bible, I hope that you go out to our resource center out there and buy a little notebook, and you can put these in the notebook. We have the pre-hole punched for you and everything. Get one out there, but get your notes out and take some notes, and then hold on to that little card. You should have gotten a three-by-five card in your guide as well. We're going to use that a little bit later, but misconceptions about prayer. One is prayer is complicated. Prayer is complicated. That's what goes in the first blank. Oh, people think you have to get a real low voice, and you have to get loud, and you have to say, Dear God, if, would you please if, meet me if, I don't know where all those ifs came from, but you know what I'm saying? Like real formal and hey, Lord, G and if you don't, and if you say, don't say Jesus with a lot of syllables in it. That you're not doing it right. I was also raised Catholic. I'm also an Italian from New York. 
go Bronx. Anyway, so, uh, so I memorized prayers. Like, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. What? That is an awful prayer to have kids say. I was like, Mom, what does that mean? She said, don't worry about it, just say it. Oh, I, no, don't do it. So anyway, I memorized prayers. So prayers for me were like memorized. I don't know what it meant. And then, or I needed something or I lost something. You know, you pray to St. Anthony and stuff like that. You, you don't know where, you want something. Oh, help me with this. So then I get saved at 30. And I start hearing these like major prayer warrior professional praying people that I was like, whoa. I, what, I don't know if I can do that. Um, like the person is like Jesus' little brother. You know what I'm talking about? Like they're that close. And so they start praying and they start saying, you are Jehovah Nisi, our banner. The Lord is my banner. And Lord, you said in Isaiah 54 and 17 on page 147 in my Bible in the upper right-hand corner where I made that note with the green thing that, Lord, no weapon formed against me will prosper. And I'm going, darn, my prayers stank. A formula. Okay, so some people would say, okay, Anita, and this man that I married, God bless him, he knows how to pray. He's got bruises on his knees from all the time he spends on his knees praying. And I admire that. And he's like an amazing prayer warrior. And he would say, back, okay, 27 years ago or whatever, it was still a, a time before that, I think, but he'd be like, pray for an hour. I'm like, what? An hour? Uh, that's not going to happen. Well, you know, like Larry Lee said, can you not tarry for one hour? I'm like, uh, no. I can't. So pray, pray early in the morning because that's when you seek the Lord, early in the morning. So, okay, I'll try praying early in the morning. I'll pray early in the morning and then pray for an hour. And I'm like, oh, I'll try. But, okay, so I get up and I pray early in the morning for an hour. And, and, then, um, and then you need to be in your prayer closet. I'm like, prayer closet? What's a prayer closet? Okay, I'll try. I'll get up early in the morning. I'll pray for an hour in my prayer closet. And, and then I'll bind the devil and loose the devil. And I'm like, what is that, binding it? Well, I have no idea, but I'll try it. Okay, so I'm up early in the morning. I'm in my prayer closet. I'm trying to pray for an hour. I'm binding and loosing and doing all that. I don't really know what I'm saying. And then some people say, well, you got to pray to the Holy Ghost. And sometimes you got to pray to Jesus. And sometimes you got to pray to God. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. But that professional praying person I heard again, they would be like, Jehovah Nisi, you are my banner. And I remember, I'm thinking, what? So I, my prayer is, Jehovah, Jehovah. Why am I praying to Jehovah? Jehovah's witness. I don't think you're supposed to pray to that God. <laughs> I didn't realize that was the name of God, one of the names of God. So I'm like, Jehovah Nisan. Uh, uh, you, God, you are good. You're you're good to the last drop, and 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 your word is so good. I hope I, that it melts in my mouth and and not in my hands. And Lord, you're like a good neighbor. You're always there. And yeah. Okay, so that was my introduction to prayer. So, you know what? Sometimes you think it's complicated, but I found this adorable little video, and it's really not. Watch this. Jesus and all the angels, and thank you for our our pizza and our plates and our and our cups and and our silverware and and our sugar and thanks for um baby Jesus and thanks for Christmas Eve and thanks for all our presents and thanks for. My friends and my brother's friends and my dad's friends and my mom's friends and my friends. Amen. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to stop. Okay. I'm not. Thank you, sir. That's very good. Amen. Amen. Did you catch the little brother? I'm not going to do it. Because he thinks it's too complicated. He thinks it's too. And you know what? That, I think, and wow, out of five, six hundred people that come to church on a weekend, why do only 20 to 30 people show up on Saturday at prayer? We have Saturday prayer every Saturday at 8 o'clock from 8 to 9. Pastor or, or one of the, somebody gives a, about a 10, 15 minute just um, great teaching on, on different aspects of prayer. And then we pray, we, we go around the campus, and then we, we praise. We, we, Andrea leads us or somebody leads us in, in praise. And it's an amazing time. 
But why do people not come? Because a lot of times it's like, oh, I can't do that. They're going to make me pray. They're going to make me say something. No. It's an amazing opportunity for you. And after today, I hope that you understand that intimate relationship with God and the presence of God through prayer and how it can revolutionize your walk with him. So some people say it's too complicated. And then some, another misconception is that prayer is boring. Prayer is boring. Like anybody besides me, like when it's time to pray, sometimes you're like, uh, I'm tired. I need a nap. Huh? Come on, you guys can be real today. You know what? Jesus said to his disciples, I want you to pray. I have to go away for a while, but I need you to pray. And when he came back, guess what they were doing? Sleeping. You know, it's like the devil's thing to go, I'm going to keep you from doing that. So you're going to get tired, and you're not going to feel like it. And, and you're going to, you know, you're going to want to do something else. Like, I'm so glad they didn't have these letters when I was growing up because I would have been branded with a bunch of labels like ADD and all this stuff and OCD and I'm really CDO because I like it to be alphabetized. But anyway, <laughs> I'm glad they didn't have those letters when I was a kid because here's the way I pray. I'm like, okay, it happened yesterday. I don't know if anybody was paying attention. Probably not because they were like praying, okay? So um, here's our pastor on his knees praying the whole 20, 30 minutes or whatever it is we're doing our individual prayer and I'm walking around and I'm praying and I'm straightening the chairs out and I'm, and I'm going back there. I'm like, what are these tissues doing over here? And then I walk over there and I'm like, oh yeah, and move this and fix that. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I got to pay that bill and I got to remind Terry to get that thing and I got to reorganize my kitchen. And what? I'm like all over the place, right? It's not boring it, it, it's, and you're going to understand in a minute how you don't have to feel bad about not being constant, one hour straight praying. But it's not boring. It's the a lie of the enemy that wants you to think it's boring and that it doesn't mean anything. And what's the difference? It's not going to make a difference. So some people, misconceptions are that it's complicated. Other people say it's boring. And sometimes people say prayer doesn't work. Prayer doesn't work because if it worked, why is my grandma not healed? Prayer doesn't work, because if it worked, why is my marriage not better? If it worked, if it worked, then why, why did I get a degree and I'm working at a job that's well below me and I'm not getting any benefits? If prayer worked, then why? Like in my own life, you know, I've, we tried to have a baby and, and prayed and believed and really wanted God to bless us and... I said, God, I know you're not a respecter of person, so I know that this can happen. And every month I would believe for a child. And every month I'd say, God, this is an opportunity for your uh, miracle to happen. And, and I would be disappointed. And, you know, and I would be so upset. And I was like, but come on. But God, you're a good God. You're a good God. So if prayer, if prayer doesn't work, that's, if that's what people say. Prayer doesn't work because this didn't happen. Some people say, maybe, maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I didn't wake up and seek him in the, early in the morning. Maybe I, maybe I didn't face the right way. Maybe I didn't say the words right. You know, maybe he's not listening. Maybe God's going to do whatever he wants regardless of what I pray. But they're not a waste of time. They're not a waste of time. We need to embrace the truth. That Jesus said, I'll stick closer than a brother. You know that blood is thicker than water. And Jesus said, I'm going to stick closer to you than a brother. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. We're not praying to a distant God, but we're praying to a loving, caring, personal God that calls us friend. He's not distant, uninvolved, or hard to find. He's right there wanting to help us. Jesus said to his disciples in John 15, 15, I have never called you servants because a master doesn't confide in his servants, but I call you my most intimate friends. Do you realize you're a friend of Jesus? A friend of Jesus. Imagine the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the God of the heaven and the earth. He calls you friend. He calls you friend. Even haters call Jesus a friend of sinners, yeah. right? What is he doing? Look at him hanging out with the sinners. We have a relational God who loves us, who cares for us, who gives us access to his throne of grace in our time of need. Don't forget that because you have misconceptions about prayer, that it's too complicated or that it's boring or that it doesn't work. 
But that's not true. I want to give you a little background on the story, background of this hymn called What a Friend We Have in Jesus. I mean, the last two that we've gotten to hear about were pretty amazing and heartfelt that those songs could be written after such tragedy. And in this case, Joseph Scriven, an Irishman who lived in the 1800s, fell in love with his childhood sweetheart and was engaged to be married to her. And the day before the wedding, they were going to meet each other on horseback. He was coming from one direction, she was coming from another. And they were going to meet, and on the way, her horse bucked threw her off, she hit her head on a rock, fell unconscious, and rolled into the river and sadly drowned and died before Joseph came. And when he came, he finds his fiance, who he's to marry the next day, dead. So needless to say, he's devastated. And he basically wandered around for quite a while, uh, you know, here and there, traveling. And he wound up in Canada And while he was there, he heard an amazing teaching and and the grace of God and gave his his life fully to the Lord and said that he wanted to live his life out uh, like the Sermon on the Mount and that he took a vow of poverty and that he would work only for people who couldn't afford it. So he would cut wood and do things and fix things and... Uh, but it, but if you could afford it, he wouldn't do it for you. He would only do it for those that couldn't afford it. So he was known as the Good Samaritan because he really helped people. So he took this vow of poverty, and there was a young lady named Eliza that was kind of noticed his heart and and his love for people, and she, uh, they began a relationship, and they fell in love, and they were to be married. And two weeks before they were to be married, she was only 23 years old. And she got pneumonia and she died. So not once, but twice this happened to him. And and he never fell in love again. Um, He he stayed in his relationship with the Lord and he continued to help people and, you know, uh, do things for them. And then about 10 years or so later, he got word that his mom back in Ireland was ill and not doing very well. And And he wanted to go and see her, but he couldn't afford it because he took a vow of poverty. So he didn't have money to get back there. But what he did was he wrote this poem... Um, to send to her. So he wrote the poem and he sent it to her and um, it started going around, like she was sharing it with some of her friends. Look what my son wrote and sharing it with some of her friends and it became a little bit known um, there in Ireland and then back in Canada he became very ill and when a friend came to visit uh, he found these original notes and said, "Did did you write this song? And he said, well, it was me and Jesus. We wrote the song. He took the song, the friend, and he gave it to a, a, another friend who published it and put it to music, and it became the hymn that we know now as what a friend we have in Jesus. And then Dwight Moody heard it, and all of his travels began to um, sing that song, and it became what we would say today, it went viral, and it just became a huge success. But he sadly didn't even know it because um, years later, he actually fell into a lake or a river or something, and he drowned. They don't know if it was, you know, on purpose or an accident. So, man, what a, what a situation to be in um, that he would write that, that poem, which became excuse me, the, uh, the hymn. So I want you to feel the power of those words. It's there in your notes, um, and you want to s- read along with me. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. That's what we're going to do today. A little bit later, we're going to pray for each other. That's so important, praying for one another. Because remember, everybody's probably going through something. And if it's not you uh, specifically, if it's not you, it's somebody you know, family member or friend. James 5.16 says, I have never, pray for each other, sorry, pray for each other so that you may be healed The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. We talk about this a lot of times when we talk about our small groups, our life groups, because once you get to know a person and pray with them, then you're going to be healed, the word says, and, and that your prayers are effective and powerful. 
So the, 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 the key is prayer can unlock a lot of different things. Prayer is the way that you defeat the devil. Prayer is the way you can restore the fallen. Prayer is the way you can move mountains. And prayer is the way you can calm a storm. I was so blessed. One of the young girls uh, came up to me between services and said, I want to tell you something. I was able to share um, some stuff with somebody, and I led them in the Lord's Prayer, and they got saved. And I was like, yes, yes, clap. I mean, that's somebody's eternity. And she said, I used to think it was going to be so hard, but it really wasn't hard. It really wasn't hard. I just, I just prayed. Prayer is the way you encounter God's presence, the way you know his will, and the way you experience his peace. Prayer is an intimate, an intimate conversation between you and God. Take it to the Lord in prayer. So today I want to just share four practical ways to pray. So on the back side of your notes, if you look, four practical ways. How do we pray? It's really very simple. Sometimes we just talk to God. Sometimes you just talk to God like you would talk to a friend, like the little girl in the video. Thank you, Lord, for my plates and my cups and my silverwares. That was so precious. Paul talks about prayer being beautiful and simple, and it's an intimate conversation that we can have with God. Now, he, tra he dreamed of traveling to Rome and preaching in Rome. And guess what happened when he got there? He was in a prison. He was chained up to guards, um, you know, possibly going to be executed. And he writes most of the New Testament books from this prison cell. And look at what he writes. He writes Philippians 4, 6, which we, we've been looking at, don't worry about anything. He's chained up. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. I mean, can you imagine? I don't think I'd be saying that if I was in the jail hooked up to the, to the guards. But Paul is like, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. If it's big enough to worry about, it's big enough to pray about. That's good. That's good. Everything. We're not supposed to worry, but if you're worrying, you better start praying. Take it to the Lord in prayer. It doesn't have to be burdens all the time. It can just be conversations. It can be as you would be talking to a friend. You know, I used to feel guilty about, I can't do that hour, half hour, ten minutes in a row thing of prayer. Just constant you know, formal prayers. I can't do that. And I would feel really guilty about it. But then I got to thinking, you know what? If I would just be continually in um, conversation with God, sort of like s small bursts of talking to God. Like I would text Terry during the day and I'd say, hey, how are you today? Are you doing good? Where are you? What do you want for dinner? What are we going to do later? It's intermittent, but it's a continual example of how we can Pray. Pray without ceasing is what the Bible says. And I don't mean pray formal prayers constantly. That would be exhausting. But how do you do life with somebody? You're constantly, you're in communication. You're in commu prayer is not nonstop petitioning God in a formal way, but it's a nonstop awareness of God. Yes. Spend the day with God. Short, consistent bursts of talking to God. God, I love you. Thank you, Lord, that when I go talk to this person that wronged me the other day, help me to forgive them. Lord, be with me when I go out today and, and you know, whatever. You're constantly in communication. I'm going to tell you something. It may shock you. I never pray for a long period of time. But I don't let a long period of time go by before I pray. I just have realized I'm not that person that can do it forever for, for, for an hour. My, your pastor is. He'd be praying all the time. God bless him. That's how he made him. But I finally was able to release the guilt that I felt because I couldn't do it that way. Amen. So what I'm telling you is you don't have to feel guilty about it. You don't have to just be in constant communication with God. Okay. So sometimes you talk to God. And sometimes you vent to God. Anybody? Anybody vent? 
You unload on God. And I'm telling you, it's okay. God is there for you. You know, don't hold it in and not say anything like Andrew was sharing with us last week. You can't hold it in because then it's going to explode. So if you vent to God, you can unload on him. I started telling you earlier about my situation, about wanting to get pregnant. And I would just vent and I would unload. And sometimes I'd say, God, I don't like you. You're, you, what's wrong? There's women that, that, that are throwing their babies away. I want to have a baby. What's up with that? And I would just unload and vent. And he didn't say, what's wrong with you? You should be thankful. No, he heard it. And he helped me. I can remember one particular evening, I mean, I was just crying because it bothered me so much. Because I was years, 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 years. Then I finally hit the Sarah age and it was like, well, I guess that ain't going to happen. But anyway, I remember laying in my bed and I just cried. I weeped and weeped and weeped. I said, I'll never, I'll never be in the mama club. And it really bothered me. But I've got two great daughters that I didn't birth, that I get to mother, and I got grandkids out of it, and I've got an amazing family, and, you know, I'll ask God maybe one day what all that was about, but he, you know what, he listened to my venting, and he will listen to your venting. When you're hurting and you reach out to a friend, you want them to be there for you. When a little child comes and they're hurting, you don't go, get away from me. I hope you don't. Get away. You say, come here, let me comfort you. It's the same thing. What a friend we have in Jesus. And David did a lot of venting in the Old Testament, didn't he? Oh, God, knock their teeth out. I've prayed that prayer a couple times. <laughs> I'm just being honest. So sometimes you talk to God. Sometimes you vent to God. And sometimes you listen to God. God gave us two ears and one mouth, people say, because you have to listen twice as long as you talk. We need to listen. Prayer is important to communicate with God, but also to listen to what he's saying. John 10, 27 says, my sheep know my voice and I know them. Who's the good shepherd? Jesus. Jesus is our shepherd, so we're to listen to him. He guides us. He leads us. He brings us to the right places. And we're to listen in order to follow. We're not just going to tell God what we want. Hey, God, this is what I want. Here's my list. Make it happen. No, we want to listen to what God is saying. Billy Graham said, prayer is simply a two-way conversation between you and God. So we need to listen more to what God is saying. There's opportunities all around. Samuel in the Old Testament said, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Can you say that? Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Do you want to hear God? How, how can you hear God? You can open your Bible. This is God's word. His word does not return void. He speaks through his word. And if you want to hear his voice, you listen to his word through, uh, listen to his voice through the Bible. You can get the YouVersion app on your phone. I love that app. They just celebrated 10 years from Life Church uh, in Oklahoma. An amazing app for you to have on your smartphone. There's uh, all kinds of versions, and there's also uh, wonderful plans on there. We're in the middle of doing the Bible Project, which is a going through the Bible in a year in um, book order, and it's amazing. And there's a little, every once in a while, there's a, a, a devotion that's like a little video that, you've seen that line drawing stuff where as they're drawing, the guy is talking. He explains the whole book that you're in, and it's really engaging. It's very, very good. So if you don't have the YouVersion Bible app, you need to download that and use the plans and different things that are available. And then, like I said, come to Saturday prayer. We hear God every Saturday. We pray over the prayer requests that you guys put in. We pray. We listen. We, people share with what they've heard. And it's at 8 o'clock on Saturday, open to everybody. We'd love for you to come. Sometimes God is, God's voice is not audible. Sometimes you can hear it through a person. Sometimes maybe a person comes and gives you a word and you don't even know. They don't even know it's from the Lord kind of a thing. And you're like, I've been praying about that thing. And that person just confirmed it for me. Sometimes it's through a song. Sometimes it's through God's spirit. Sometimes as you're seeking him, he will speak to you in different ways. Sometimes it's in a still small voice. Sometimes, you know, if you've got your ears open to hear, he's going to speak to you. So how do we pray? Sometimes we talk to God. Sometimes we vent to God. 
Sometimes we listen to God and sometimes, all the time, you give thanks to God. All the time, you give thanks to God. Put that in the last uh, line there. All the time, you give thanks to God for who he is. You're giving thanks to God for who he is, not for what he's done. Thank God he's done things for me, but I give thanks for who he is. His greatness, his goodness, his mercy, his, his loving kindness. And remember, Paul from that Roman prison awaiting possible execution said, let's all read this together in Philippians 4 and 6 and 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. That's peace in the middle of the storm. That's peace in the middle of trials. God's peace that raises itself up over all of this stuff. You can't explain it, but you can feel the peace of God. Let me tell you, prayer may or may not change your circumstances. It may not change your circumstances, but I'll tell you what it will change. It will change you. If you pray and you listen and you, and you hear what God is saying and you bring all those things to God, it's going to change you. And feel the weight of these words that Joseph Scriven wrote. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. True peace, it's the last fill-in on your page. True peace isn't the absence of problems. We're going to have problems. But true peace is found in the presence of God. What a friend we have in Jesus. And what a privilege to carry everything to him in prayer. I hope that you'll understand the beautiful relationship that you can have with God and Jesus through prayer and that you would understand that sincere and true love that he has for you. Wherever you are in your prayer life, you can take a next step. You can become closer to him. So I want to pray this morning. Those of you that personally are going through a trial or a burden or those of you that know somebody that's going through a trial or a burden bad news something's happening would you just raise up your hand and you say I need prayer just raise your hand everywhere look at all the hands going up everywhere remember people are going through stuff let me pray for you father I thank you that these people that raised their hand are laying this at your feet and we know God that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we could ask or think we know that that these things that are, that are happening in and, and through their lives and their loved ones or their friends, God, you have it all in the palm of your hand, God, and you are able to move mountains and turn things around. And so I pray sincerely right now for those that raise their hands, Lord God, about these trials and these burdens. And we know, Lord God, that you'll never leave or forsake us. You'll, you're right there for us, and you want things to come to our good, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we're going to do something, that card that you have, that blank card that you have in your, in your notes there. Would you take just a moment? What we're going to do is I'm going to ask you to put your first name on there. Now, what we're going to do is in a minute, we're going to exchange this with somebody else. And that somebody else is going to pray that prayer today and all week pray over that prayer request for you and I know that by next week I'm going to hear some testimonies of what God has done because we're praying for one and other so put your first name and put that that whatever it is down on your card don't go into a lot of detail because you're probably going to give it to somebody that you don't know God knows the circumstance of the situation you may be able to just say you know um, like I would say pray for my family and God knows the, the situation you know, somebody else might say, pray for a healing for my brother. Pray for salvation for my next door neighbor. Would you go ahead and write that down? 
You don't have to put a lot of stuff on the page. Now, by you taking that card, you're saying, I'm going to pray over this all week. That's it. Keep going. Some of you still have your card. Don't hold on to it. Let somebody pray for you. Go ahead and remain standing. Father, we could bring these needs before you right now, Lord God, and I thank you for, for you meeting all of these needs according to your riches and glory, Father. I thank you for those that are praying for each other. Thank you for breakthrough. Thank you for testimonies of how you've met these needs throughout the week, God. Thank you for this body of Christ here today, Lord, that cares about each other, prays for one another. Thank you that we can bring these to you, Lord, in prayer. We give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. Hey friends, thanks for joining us today for this great teaching. And I believe it was very impactful to you. I love this series as we're looking at the hymns of the church. And, and they've ministered to people for years, but I believe today's really spoke to you. In fact, I'm so excited to just think about that Jesus loves us so very much and he has a plan for our life. Uh, you're not an accident, but you're on purpose. And uh, I would just encourage you, if you've never surrendered your heart to the Lord, if you've never made him Lord of your family, I'd love to lead you in a prayer today to make that decision. Would you pray this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I turn over my life to you. I realize that you died for my sins and you rose on the third day to give me new life, a fresh start. And as best as I know how, I want to serve you the rest of my life. I pray that today in Jesus' name. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with me today, I have a book that I want to give you. If you just call the church office and let them know, hey, I'd like to have that book. I, I gave my heart to the Lord. Then we'll be able to send that to you. And if you don't have a Bible, just let us know. I'll be happy to send you a Bible because that Bible is going to give you direction for your life. I want you to know that we love you and we thank you so much for joining us. I would like to say if you have a prayer request, you can also leave that at the church office when you call. And if you, this ministry has been a blessing to you, I would really encourage you to just ask God what he would have for you to invest in this ministry. That we can continue to spread the gospel. That we can continue to keep our missionaries on the field and make a difference because Jesus is coming very soon. Now we're going to sing this song. We're going to sing this song with Hannah again. Would you put your heart into this, especially knowing what the whole situation was with Joseph Scriven when he wrote this song. Let's sing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. All to, you know, we're able to give everything to him. What a friend we have in Jesus. sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? discouraged take it to the Lord in prayer oh what peace we often forfeit oh what needless pain we bear all because we do not carry to God in prayer. 
good Savior thou hast promised. Thou will all our burdens bear. May we ever, Lord, be bringing all to thee in earnest prayer. Soon in glory bright and cloud. prayer, rapture, praise, and endless worship will be our sweet portion. 